these glasses have been one of the most interesting things that has come out in recent times. Um, I can actually stay in the moment while I can see contextual information in front of me. And that's the vision, but it's like a heads up display for, for me every single day. I get to see notifications, I get to see the weather, the dashboard, uh, as it may, to give me information as I'm living my life without having to look at my phone or without having to look at my watch. Um, so nothing really takes me out of the moment, but keeps me in, in whatever I'm doing, keeps me in that context. It seamlessly blends the digital and the physical world by placing text in front of my eyes without hiding anything that's really in front of me. I would not recommend wearing these or looking at the text while you're driving or operating heavy machinery. But um, for example, on a day-to-day -day basis, for people who are not able to understand all dialects of English or uh, different languages, what you can do is enable the translation mode and they act as captions for your real life. So you can see subtitles for every single thing that you're talking, uh, every single thing that you're listening to, every single person you're talking to, um, gives you more information, gives you more rich uh, information right there in front of your eyes and allows you to uh, be more focused and engaged in the conversation rather than be distracted by anything else. The original usage of the translation feature was essentially to allow people to communicate better who don't understand or speak each other's languages. Uh, this gives me closed captions for day to day if it's the same language. But for people who are not able to understand French, so for example, I cannot understand French, this allows me to read English version of whatever is being spoken to me and be able to try and sort of react in the situation or respond back with other means uh, by my actions. Um, and essentially helps people to communicate better to each other. So the interesting thing that um, I realized when I saw the ads for this company was how small they were. Um, some people are saying that they're based out of China. What I've seen online is they're actually based out of Berlin. Then they've only raised 9 million as far as I can tell from all the information that's available online. They're an incredibly small team of 11 people who are actually working on the hardware and software. On the software side, they have iOS and Android applications. But on the hardware, I was actually very, very surprised to see uh, the hardware in such a great place, given this is their first actual product which has come out. They're, the glasses and the quality of the lenses themselves has been impeccable. The clarity has been very, very high. I'm comparing them to the Lindbergh glasses, which I regularly wear with the Zeiss lenses. And these lenses have posed no issues whatsoever, even with my astigmatisms. They were uh, accepting all kinds of prescriptions when I was placing the order. And not like other companies which would take the order and then ask me to turn, uh, sorry, cancel the prescription order just because they were not ready to ship the prescriptions. Um, but I think overall, I was pleasantly surprised to see a startup trying to take on the likes of Apple or Facebook who are approaching this from very, very different directions and trying to get to a heads up display or an or a AR glasses uh, segment which has not been conquered yet. Everyone's trying to get to that vision, but they're not at that point where they can, where anyone can win. So this is uh, still very, very early in the sense of who is the next iPhone for smart classes. So the, the way I think of these and the way I think of smart classes is actually in four different tiers. The first tier which I consider is the, the most basic one, which is a, a pair of glasses um, which has a speaker embedded. This is something which Bose tried to do with their frames a little while ago. The second tier is what uh, Facebook or Meta has tried to do with their Ray-Ban line, which has a camera, which has a microphone, and which has uh, speakers inside them. So it is a conversational AI component which can see your world and can respond back to you, but you can't really see anything in the lenses themselves. The third tier is what I'm wearing right now, which is the Even Realities G1, which gives you a heads-up display with minimal text in front of your eyes, has some AI component, can or cannot have camera. I think they try to cancel out the camera for this iteration just so that they could reduce weight and figure out other things like battery life. 
And the fourth iteration is what Meta recently announced is the Orion, which gives me uh, Apple Vision Pro-esque screens in front of me, gives me complete experiences like hand tracking, uh, video calling embedded inside the regular glasses uh, form factor. But that's the fourth iteration. I think there's, there's room for all four, but um, at this point in time, this one is the most affordable and the most portable, which you can actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so now let's, let's dig into the hardware. And uh, you can read the, read the tech specifications on their website, but uh, comparing it to regular glasses, if you, if you were to have a regular pair of glasses, I, I've been wearing glasses all my life. I've been wearing glasses since I was three years old. Um, glasses range anywhere from 15 grams to 50 grams in weight, and they sit right on your nose bridge and get supported by your ears. Um, the glasses which I wear, which are a pair of uh, Lindbergh's titanium, whatever, they were the lightest one which I could get. Uh, these are 17 grams. I have a pair of sunglasses which are at 45 grams, but these are sitting a comfortable 40 odd grams with or without their uh, sunglass attachment. Um, so I think they, they are still on the heavy side but I feel like the material and the construction is actually incredibly awesome because the material is a combination of manganesium and titanium that's being used. They're compact, um, they use lenses which have a bonded screen in them, but it, the, the glasses themselves have caused no strain whatsoever. The prescription was absolutely immaculate, the prescription was perfect. I didn't have to go back to them and tell them that the prescription was wrong because most eye, eyewear brands end up doing that also. Um, they're incredibly high quality. It does not, honestly, it does not feel like a first generation product from a startup. So I've been wearing them for almost two months now and I, I would say that I certainly feel the weight on my nose and a little bit on my ears. They are a little bit thicker on the back because that's where they're actually placing the battery and the antenna system. Um, in terms of clarity of the screen itself, I have not seen any issues with the clarity or being able to read text. It would have been nice to change color, but I understand that this is the first iteration and they can only do green. Um, as far as the hardware issues or quirks, I haven't seen any specific quirks except for Bluetooth connectivity issues, which I was facing in the first couple of weeks. And their support team was incredibly responsive. Uh, they pushed out fixes to the app. They, they responded back to my emails incredibly quickly. Within a period of uh, 48 hours, I, will, I was able to get a resolution on how to make sure that my glasses are being connected to the phone. So it's interesting how they have two projectors on each side and they project content on, uh, on, the, on the lens on the screen itself, which is bonded in the lens. And they both individually connect to the phone or the app. And that's how they're, they're displaying. So sometimes I've seen that only one of those work or both of them work out of alignment, which can cause some issues, but all of those have actually been resolved in the latest firmware and the latest app update. So they've been very, very efficient in terms of pushing out app updates. Um, and the hardware has not given me any issues. The case itself is actually very, very solid. Uh, it's, it's one of the well-designed cases. In fact, uh, even the sunglasses manufacturer or regular prescription glasses manufacturer don't give you a case that is this good. They always charge, for, charge extra for a case. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that this came in bundled with, with the glasses. As far as the software goes, they have an app on iOS, which is super interesting. They, they've sort of picked up this whole new design language, which kind of sits between what Apple was trying to do a little while ago with iOS 7, when they went all minimal, and also the Nothing OS uh, style guide, which is more edgy and more, more sort of uh, binary digital-esque. So they've, they've sort of leaned towards the digital-esque design where they have a more complicated font. Uh, as far as features go, they haven't really added new features, which I appreciate because I think they're more focused on making sure that the things they've released are optimized and work as well as they, they say they do. Uh, they did open source the app and it's interesting that actually just happened this week and someone came out with a Python package for you to connect with the glasses themselves. So they have a dashboard which shows you relevant information which could include the weather, which could include your next calendar event, which has a quick note and uh, of course time. 
but those are the core functionality which exists across the, the de device itself on the software side. That's exactly what the app also has. Um, the app allows you to invoke even realities, uh, the AI component, the even AI, which I can also invoke from my glasses themselves or look at notifications, whichever might be in front of my eyes. There is a teleprompter, which I'm actually not using because I would prefer to read I would prefer not to read anything uh, when I'm talking to the camera, just because it feels like it distracts me from my actual thought process. Um, but that's the core functionality which exists in the in the software at this point in time. I would love to see integrations with other things. Uh, I would love to have my knowledge management system pushing information into the glasses themselves. I would love to see my tasks uh, being displayed to me or uh, being able to customize various things I see on the dashboard. I don't want to see a quick note, but I want to see a combination of other things. Uh, I would also love to see other uh, sort of information when I move my head in certain directions. That's definitely possible. They just don't enable it right now because when I look up, I see the most recent notification if there is a pending notification or if I look up, I see the dashboard itself. Uh, the other things I would love to customize is the gesture, which is when I press on the stem one, two, three, or four times. Right now, it's predefined as to what I can or cannot do. Double tap ends up uh, putting the glasses on mute. A single tap and hold ends up invoking the AI, which I can speak into and ask questions and get answers to. But I think it's, it's just some of these smaller, more interactions which I could customize and pull in information from other sources would actually take this one step beyond. There is one thing which I did not talk about is the navigation and the map functionality, uh, which right now is limited to cycling or walking. Uh, I don't uh, prefer to use the glasses when I'm doing that, especially in the, in the city I'm living in. But if I was walking around a new city, I would most likely use it. I did use it when I was in Chicago and I was visiting different places and I could stay in the moment, appreciate the architecture of the city, but also be able to uh, always know where I'm going without having to take out my phone all the time. So uh, it's interesting. We talked about the hardware, we talked about the software, we talked about the company, but what is it that I would like to see in the next generation of these classes? And I'm hoping that the company will actually continue to work on this the company actually stays around for them to release a second iteration. But if they were, I would love to see a pair of glasses, which is maybe a little bit lighter and also has speakers in the stem themselves so that they uh, kind of bridge that gap that they, that they have no other input mechanism besides my voice uh, and the only output is the lens in front of my eyes. So I would, I would honestly love to see a pair of these with the speaker system inside it. And then they would actually be at par in terms of capabilities, which the Humane AI pin was trying to do. The Humane AI pin created this sound bubble and this could possibly do the same with bone conduction. However, I think they, these guys are pretty smart in terms of they're not saying that they are an AI product and they're not trying to replace your smartphone, but they're coming in slowly augmenting my vision with information and then trying to sort of tro Trojan horse their way into a day-to-day, -day, a daily wear product. Uh, they have to be at a higher bar because everyone's so used to wearing glasses on their faces that unless they can actually function as a high quality pair of glasses, no one would end up buying these anyway. It's funny, everyone's trying to get to this sort of form factor, whether it's Meta who is coming in from their Meta Orion, or whether it's Apple who's coming in from the Apple Vision Pro AR VR side. It's interesting how Meta was doing that with their uh, the Quest headsets, but now they have suddenly pivoted to becoming a spatial computing company, which is what Apple was saying about their, their Vision Pro line. I, I think the, the smart money is on Meta to get there first, but Apple to get it right. That's where I think I am at the moment. It's bridging the gap and let's see who gets to that future, being the first to be the iPhone for my eyes uh, would be amazing. Uh, it always, uh, this always reminds me of uh, when I was a kid, I was watching Dragon Ball Z and I would see the scouters in front of Vegeta and all of his, all of his team. Um, 
the glasses actually remind me so close to a scouter that it shows me relevant information right in front of my eyes at the tap of a button without me having to pull out my phone. It's that future which was envisioned so many years ago, uh, which is uh, super exciting for me. Would I recommend that you buy these? If you wear glasses, if you have been wearing glasses, um, you could definitely give them a shot if you are into tech because these give you a nice pair of glasses which are a little bit on the heavy side but give you access to all of this tech right in front of you by augmenting your vision on a day-to-day -day basis.